Uh, welcome and thank you for joining me. My name is Jo Mickin and I'm the CEO of Monash College and um, we're very pleased to have you here today to experience just a little taste of our virtual classroom. Um, like the rest of the world, we had to um, move to a different way, serious echoes going, move to a different way of teaching with the incidence of COVID-19. So we have gone to a virtual model um, and all of, our, all of our teachers have done a fabulous job of actually converting all of math, our material into a virtual classroom. And the purpose of this was to make sure that students didn't lose track with their studies, that they stayed on course and that we were able to demonstrate that we're still um, committed to the ability to find um, uh, to find ways to help all of our students make the journey into Monash University as quickly and as smoothly as possible with as little interruption as we can. So the model that we've constructed involves all of the um, normal support that you would receive at the college in the sense that teachers are still available, um, materials are still taught in a way that where you can access your colleagues and, and peers as well as the teachers individually. Um, we've, we've reconstructed the way our counsellors work, so there's access to online um, support, both from a learning studies perspective and also from um, uh, just for, for all manner of issues that, that students face as they go through their journey. So today, um, James Kennedy, one of our wonderful teachers from our Foundation Year program, is going to uh, lead you on a, a, an experience of the virtual, virtual classroom um, for chemistry. And um, I hope you enjoy it. We really, we really look forward to welcoming you to Monash College, um, whether it be face to face when the COVID situation uh, improves and we can welcome you back on campus. But in the interim, we hope to welcome you through our virtual classroom experience. So thank you everybody. And James, over to you. Thank you very much for that introduction, Joe. Um, welcome, everybody. I've seen we've got an audience from a great number of countries, which is absolutely uh, wonderful to see. Myself, I'm from the United Kingdom, as you can tell from my accent, and I studied in Monash University as well. It was absolutely wonderful. It was uh, some of the best um, time of my life was, was studying there, so you've made a very good choice. Today, I'm going to show you just one little bit of one of our chemistry topics, which is introduction to the periodic table. Sorry, introduction to solids, liquids, and gases. There we go, introductions to solids, liquids, and gases. So jumping straight in, there are three main types of matter. Um, out of interest, does anybody know how many types or how many states of matter there really are? There are more than three. You can write your answer in the chat box. Does anyone know? Oh, lots of people saying four. 25 is one guess. That's the five. Yeah, um, it's somewhere in the middle, actually. So there are something like around 12 to 15 different states of matter. I think a lot of people are saying four because there's a very common one. Oh, it was a typo. <laughs> there's, a, there's a very common one called plasma, which is things like fire, lightning, candles, flames, fluorescent light bulbs, things like that. Um, but there are many more really exotic ones. Yes, correct, it is about 15. So um, there are many more exotic ones, but the three that we use in chemistry on a day-to-day -day basis are just these three. They are solids, liquids, and gases, and that's where we start. By the way, as I go through this lecture, you will also, if you're a student at Monash College, you will, of course, have access to the resources on Moodle. Now, just to show you what you would have, this is uh, Moodle. This is the chemistry page on uh, Moodle, and you can see I've got all my other subjects there. I've got biology, IT, physics, and another chemistry unit all there. And I haven't done any of the quizzes, but that's okay. I'm, I'm the teacher. Um, you can see your pr quiz progression there. And that reminds you to do the quizzes on time. Um, this is your uh, timetable. And here are the topics. There are the faces of the teachers down there. That's me. And uh, you can see these are the topics that we teach in semester. Well, usually it's, semester, but it's unit number one. Unit one, chemistry. You can see there's a, a practical section. 
that's very important. You've got a science toolbox. That's uh, all the basic knowledge you need. We've got um, number one, observations and measurements. It's very maths based. You've got bonding, which is very descriptive writing based. You've got equilibrium again, that's very maths based. Acids and bases is fantastic. Um, all these different topics are chemistry unit one. And the one that we are doing today is uh, solids, liquids, and gases, which is under number six, atomic. Um, atomic theory. So normally you would have access to all of these resources and you would have a, um, a booklet, right? You would have a printed booklet with all the quizzes, with all the worksheets, with everything you need uh, right there. It's absolutely fantastic, very, very handy to have. I'll go back to our slides. There are three states of matter, as we agreed at the moment. There are three states of matter. There is a solid, there's also liquid, and there is finally um, gas so solid liquid and gas there are those three states of matter now what's interesting is you get these transitions between the states of matter so you can switch from for example you can switch from um, a solid to a liquid and the way that you switch from a solid to a liquid is by going from here to here that process is called melting from liquid to solid, the process is called freezing. And every transition has a name. From liquid to um, gas is called vaporization, condensation. Here you've got sublimation and deposition. That's from a solid straight to a gas, which happens at very, very low pressures. Um, and that's a very interesting um, type of change. There are two very common substances which do undergo sublimation. Does anybody know what they are? Which two substances undergo sublimation? Correct, iodine, dry ice, yes. Uh, in fact, there are more, there are many more. There are some stranger ones, something you might wear in jewelry, for example. Yes, I2, iodine, dry ice, that's CO2. A particular gemstone does this as well. Um, another one is, it begins with D, correct, yes, Salama is correct, yes, um, Salama. Um, it's, it's a correct, yes, diamond. Diamond does actually sublime. If you wanted to, you could heat up a diamond to 3,600 degrees and it would turn into a gas. This would be a very expensive experiment, but it's uh, technically it can be done. So this is a phase diagram and you can look up on this phase diagram, given your pressure and your temperature, you can find what state of matter your substance will be in. Now, Look at the, just look at the gradients of this line for a minute. This is a, a normal um, a normal substance. Most substances have a, a positive gradient for this line. However, for water, it's very strange. For water, this line goes backwards. See that how it curves backwards? And what that means is um, actually applying pressure to ice will melt it. It's very strange. Think about this. This line here is uh, room temperature. Right, this line is room temperature right here. Um, and I'm gonna put room temperature, room conditions uh, about there. So if I had um, a glass of water uh, on my desk, it would probably be where that X is right there. So this is roughly, roughly, let's say 20 degrees. And this is at one atmosphere of pressure, which is roughly, you know, the, how the weather is uh, today. It doesn't change much. And um, if I freeze that glass of water, I would take its temperature down to this part here. It would be there, this other X on the left. Interestingly, by applying pressure to it, you can actually um, get, it into, uh, the <laughs> get it into the liquid phase. And this is an experiment you can do at home. What you can do is you can get a block of ice, hang weights onto it with a piece of string, and the string will move straight through the ice. The pressure will literally melt the ice. And I have done this experiment at home. It takes about 24 hours, but it's absolutely fascinating. The next day you hear this clunk, as the ice, um, as the string falls all the way through the ice. So you can change the state of matter by changing the pressure or the temperature. There we go. Okay. This is very, very basic. Just to remind you that the states of matter are different. You know that solids have a rigid fixed shape and they have a fixed volume. They can't be squashed. Liquids also can't be squashed, um, but they're not rigid. They flow, they're a fluid, and uh, they also have a fixed volume. Now, gases, I'm sure you're aware, are not rigid, not fixed shape, no fixed volume, and can be squashed. They are the most versatile of all, that they are completely compressible because the gaps between the gas atoms are so great 
that most of the gas is empty space. Here's a quick question for you. If I take my glass of water, let's say that my glass of water contains, um, let's make it simple, let's say it's a really big glass of water. Let's say it's one liter, okay? Now, if I boil that glass of water, how big, roughly, would the water vapor gas be, right? So I'm taking one liter of water, I boil it. What volume does the water vapor have, roughly? It's gonna be more than a liter, right? Because the gas is bigger than the liquid. Write your answers into the chat. P1, uh, yes, correct. Assuming N and T don't change, we'll do that formula today, Ahmed. Roughly. Might give you the answer. 10 liters. Li Xinju. A little bit more than 10. I'll, 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 I'll give you the formula first. This is the formula we'll use to calculate this, okay? So we're going to use this formula here. There is a, correct, yes. So Mohammed is, uh, is very correct. There's this um, PV equals NRT formula. Now I'm not going to show you this in a lot of detail today, but normally we would explain every single part of this formula. This formula is something you will use a lot in this topic. There's also P1V1 divided by N1T1 is equal to P2V2 divided by N2V2, sorry, T2. Now what do we need to uh, understand here? P is pressure. Okay, so P is, uh, is always pressure. And I'll just annotate these, P is pressure. V is volume. N is the number of moles, which you should have studied before. It's the number of, essentially, the amount of substance you have, how many particles. R is a constant, it's 8.31. And T is the temperature in Kelvin. Okay, so this formula down here, it's just a derived version of that. And what it shows you is before and after. If I change a substance, if I change a gas, it will uh, allow me to calculate how those values change. For example, let's say I change the volume of the gas, I can calculate the new volume over here. If I change the pressure of the gas, I can find out you know, the new, how the other variables change along with those um, pressure, volume, and temperature. So it's very useful formulae, and we'll just do a couple of quick examples. The answer, by the way, is one liter of H2O, if you boil it, becomes 1,700 liters. Steam is 1,700 times bigger than liquid water. It's phenomenal. That's why steam engines are, they contain, you know, they, they, call, they, um, they produce so much power. All right. So this simple model of mercury is how we measure pressure. So the atmospheric pressure in the air pushes down on the surface of the liquid metal in the bowl. That then pushes up the, uh, the tube and it leaves you with a, a vacuum at the top where there's a certain height of mercury. So this is where the phrase millimeters of mercury comes from, which is the traditional way to measure air pressure. This is the traditional way to predict the weather as well. You could predict that if the pressure goes down, you will have maybe cold weather, rain coming soon. If the pressure goes up, you will have probably warm weather coming soon. So this was a very early, very old device used to predict weather and measure air pressure. Now, one atmosphere is equal to 101.3 kilopascals, which is equal to 760 millimeters of mercury. And these are values which you will need to have written in your booklet. All right. Temperature is measured with a thermometer. And there's the formula for temperature. We use Kelvin and Kelvin is equal to the degrees Celsius value plus 273, which is a very special number. Why is 273 such a special number? Absolute zero, correct. Yes, Li Xinjou is correct. And uh, yes, it is absolute zero. And that is why uh, we use that constant. So temperature is always positive. Now, these are some of the questions you would have in your booklet. We're not going to do them today because we don't have time, but in a normal lesson, I would maybe do the first couple of questions and then uh, 
we would go and um, progress through the others together. Like this. You do some conversions. You know, normally you have much more time, right? So we would do this kind of question. We'd also do some temperature conversions like this. Maybe I would do the first one, you would do the second one. There are more on Moodle and there are more in your booklets. Now, we don't have time today, but I would then show you in this lesson three gas laws and they begin with A, B, and C. You know actually what? There's another one beginning with D. Now, the first one is Avogadro, Boyle, Charles, and Dalton. Conveniently, their names begin with A, B, C, and D, but they collectively made four formulae which describe how gases work. Very convenient formulae, but what we can do is take all of their formulae, we study them individually first, and then we combine them to make PV equals NRT. And uh, it was really invented by kind of four people who each did their own work on gases. So we would look at those, those, uh, those findings. We would then do some more questions, okay? And then we would study Charles and we would study then I would go into Dalton as well with some demonstrations. I like to do demonstrations on Zoom as well. Again, we don't have time today, but we would normally do those uh, live like this. All right. Okay, now at the end of the lesson, you would then go into Moodle. So I'll just show you your, where your homework would be. Your homework would be in here. So it's actually states of matter one that we're doing, number nine, sorry, not number six. And in here, you would then have a quiz. There we go. So this is your quiz. You've also got revision questions. I'll open that for you too. The revision questions look like this for this topic. This is a typical um, thing I might ask you to do at the weekend, a weekend homework, for example. It's one page with questions like this. Uh, what is the phase of the substance under these conditions? You look up from a graph, you answer that question there. Uh, I like to print these for the students as well. And here is a quiz, which uh, you would also do every week, 10 questions and you can try it as many times as you need, but you're expected to get a very good score, right? So that it's um, because there's no, there's no real time limit and you can re, you can re attempt it. So you're attempt, you're, you're supposed to get a very good score in these. All right. Um, now I'm going to ask the, the host, do we have enough time to do a Kahoot today? I think we, I think we do. I think we do. We would normally do this. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll jump into Kahoot. I'll go to, um, where is our favorite? Da, 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 da. This one right here. You're probably familiar with Kahoot. There's only five questions in this one right here. You will need another browser window or a, a phone or something like that. And what I'll do is, to start, you can log in to you can log into this website here, Kahoot.it, and type in that pin code right there. That will get you into the Kahoot, okay? And then you will have access. So I'll just give you about thirty seconds to go to that website and log in. Amazingly quick right there. It's good in the virtual learning environment. I've actually uh, managed to do some experiments at home. It's, it's been amazing. Um, it's amazing what you can do actually, because um, a lot of the experiments that we do, you can actually find, find ways of doing them at home, right? So I've got portable versions of some of the equipment and, and we do it on Zoom. And I can screencast the, um, the data logging uh, the data logging app and you can see that you know the temperature of the things that change over time and stuff it's actually been it's actually been working quite well and we found home versions of some of the experiments too so you still get hands-on time cool all right i'm going to give you about five seconds okay you can still log in afterwards of course in a real lesson i would <laughs> i would give you the link beforehand you would have a bit more time Okay. All right. Three, two, one, and then we go. You can still join, by the way. Uh, the, the information will be at the bottom. Okay. Is sand a solid, a liquid, or a gas? Very easy. Yeah. 
You get marks for speed, of course, here. So I'm gonna... Ooh, somebody said it's neither. Um, if you'd like to explain that answer in the chat, I'm very interested. Yes, I think that's a very smart answer, but I'd like to see if you could just write that in the chat. I'd love to see. All right, Great Impala is winning because they were a bit faster. What is the boiling point of water? It's not as easy as it sounds. All right, okay. So the boiling point of water is, the, is 100, 100 degrees Celsius, but you have to add two, uh, 273 to that, okay? So the, the boiling point of water is 373 Kelvin because it's 100 plus 273. We don't use Celsius for the gas calculations. All right. Which facts about matter are true? There we go. There were two correct answers. Um, gases have higher kinetic energy than liquids. Um, possibly debatable, but we'll leave it at that for the moment because it's a, a demonstration. Liquids can turn into gases. Uh, yes, they can. Okay. All right. Two more questions. Let's see if Great Impala can win. Which state of matter has the highest kinetic energy? They're all the same. Liquid, solid, gas. Yeah, gas, good. Now the smart answer here would really be, depends on the temperature, but assuming it's one substance, uh, the gas phase will have the most kinetic energy, unless it's moving very fast, like in an airplane. Let's go to, uh, how can you turn a liquid into a solid? Here we go, how can you turn a liquid into a solid? So think about the diagram, which way do you go, turn a liquid into a solid? You can go to the left right, for water. You can go uh, down as well. There we go, freeze it. <laughs> nice and easy. There we go. So let's see who won this. Five out of five. Prairie Sable. Five out of five for Captain Unicorn. And five out of five for, who says, Champion Puffin. Congratulations. You have all done incredibly well. And there were more of you too. Uh, who also did great. All right. Okay. Well, that concludes my section for today. And now I would like to introduce you to, um, to Lin Yu, who is going to talk about her experience completing a group assignment whilst in the virtual classroom. So group assignments are a very important part of your assessment while you're studying at Monash College. And in the virtual classroom, you still have the ability to complete your assignments in groups and also individually. So Lynn, it's over to you. Thank you, James. Hi, everyone. My name's Lynn, and I'm currently studying Monash University Foundation Year in the virtual classroom, and I'm from China. Uh, today, I would like to share with you my experience studying in the virtual classroom and how I completed a group assignment as part of my assessment. Uh, as part of my biology subject, pathogen and disease, I completed a group assignment about hepatitis B. There were two members in my group, my friend and I, and we were both studying in the virtual classroom. Uh, our teacher helped us allocate the group. Uh, we undertook a review of the current research on hepatitis B and presented those results to our teacher. Uh, then to complete our group assignment, while studying online, we met with each other uh, via Zoom meeting once a week and also contacted each other through WeChat to arrange what day and time we would meet online. Uh, 
uh, in these meetings, we worked out who would complete what part of the assignment, uh, review each other's completed sections, and discuss our teacher's feedback. We submitted our assignments through Moodle, which is our learning management system. And our teacher was always available to help us during our discussions online. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, as part of our assignment, we had to produce a slideshow presentation about hepatitis B to share with the class and our teacher. Uh, just as a picture, there are many tools in the virtual classroom that allow us to collaborate and present just like in face-to-face -face classes. Here is a picture of my friend and I with our slideshow presentation we created on Prezi, which we completed during our Zoom meeting online. Next slide, please. We also completed a written component, which was our script. Here you can see we use Google Docs to write out our written component. And this program allowed my friend and I to work on the same components together while meeting online via Zoom. I enjoy working on this group assignment as I was able to gain skills in researching, writing, and presenting, as well as collaborating in a group. I enjoyed working on this group assignment in the virtual classroom as I had all the tools readily available as well as help from my group member and our teacher. Uh, that's all I want to share. Thanks for listening. Thank you very, very much for that, uh, Lynn. That was fantastic. So Lynn showed us what it's like to learn as a student doing individual assignments and as group, uh, group assignments as well. And group work is it's an important part of what you do here at Monash College. Um, and I'll also add that when you're, when you're in a real class, it's a lot more interactive. And I realized that today I was the only one speaking. You know, some of you were in the chat, but in a real lesson, because you know each other and I know you and you know your teacher, uh, it would be, there would be a lot of people, you know, not too much, but, you know, people would be able to ask questions with the microphone. There'd be a lot more questions in the chat. Um, you know, it would be, a, it's a much more interactive experience and you can talk to each other as well. You would go into small groups in breakout rooms. Um, it's, it's almost like being face to face and you've actually got some added bonuses uh, from being online uh, that you don't have from being face to face. So thank you very much uh, for sharing that, Lynn. Now, Whilst you're studying online from your home country, you will still have access to all of the support services that are available at Monash College to help you uh, in your studies. And we have a dedicated um, student engagement uh, services team who organize a range of clubs and activities that you can join to learn new skills and to meet students from all over the world. So these are some of the people here. Um, I think there are more, but there's some pictures of what they do, all sorts of sports and other types of um, activities that you can join. And uh, that was a big part of my experience um, uh, as well. To be a successful student, you need to feel supported in all areas of your life. So we have learning and careers advisors that will be able to make contact with you to make sure you're on the right pathway to Monash University. And you'll also have, uh, because your health and well-being is a priority at Monash College, um, free confidential counselling, if you like, uh, to help you through personal, academic and emotional challenges. And finally, of course, you've also got excellent academic support and excellent teaching team. And, and I say that not just because I'm a teacher and, you know, some of my amazing colleagues are also great teachers, but... Um, we have a lot of different forms of, of help. You know, we have lectures, tutorials all on Zoom, and then we have um, the, the help sessions, like a help desk where you can come and ask us questions. We give video feedback to emails that students ask us. There's a lot of different ways that you can access your teacher at Monash College through Zoom and obviously face-to-face -face, um, when that happens as well. So, yeah, I think you've made an excellent choice. Monash College is amazing. Monash University is amazing. And if you have any more questions, you can scan that QR code right there. Or you can click on the email link right there. You can type marketing at monashcollege.edu.au. Uh, I think the email address is in the chat as well. There's also Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And you've got a website with information on courses. Every possible avenue you need for more information is right there on the screen. So, thank you very much. Excuse the delay at the start. 
and I wish you all the best in your academic journey.